you don't need our help. You know you don't. We believe you when you tell us that you don't need our help. We try to give away as much free, concise, accurate information as possible to help you to be successful either with your COVID-19 Economic Injured Disaster Loan or the EIDL, as we call it, or with an SBA Natural Disaster Loan. And we've been doing that for years now. And we've had people come and tell us that the videos we've done here for free, step-by-step -step instructions and other updated information those people have told us those videos have helped them to be successful either during the pandemic when they're trying to get their loans approved or increase modifications done or scale over some obstacle in the road on the path on their way to success with the program or even after the program ended two and a half years ago with information that we continue to provide because we are still in the trenches with you the small business owner and with the SBA literally every day of the week this is what we do and we not only interact with with the SBA and small business owners, but I am constantly updating myself on with SBA updates, press releases from the SBA, media articles about the SBA, congressional reports that the SBA provides, and so forth. So we became the EIDL experts, not by choice in the beginning, but over time, based on a desire to provide accurate information, because we know there's so much junk out there. The problem is that when you say you don't need us, you really do need us, but you don't know it yet. And here are some examples of recent client interactions, people who paid us to act as their consultants to solve problems at the SBA because they didn't think they needed us until it was too late and then they needed us. The most recent example is a small business where there were two partners, been in business for something like 14 or 15 years, and one partner was exiting the business and the other partner was buying him out. To achieve the buyout, they went to a lender, which was an SBA approved lender, and they were approved for $1,250,000 loan to affect the buyout and also finance other operational changes for for the business that would allow them to hire more staff, create more operational efficiencies. There was a lot baked into this $1.25 million loan. The business entity had taken out a COVID EIDL during the pandemic, ultimately a total of $1 million with increased modifications right down the line. They have in place a lien from the Small Business Administration for a $1 million COVID EIDL. They went to a bank and they said to the bank, we need $1,250,000 to fund operational upgrades, marketing upgrades, and the partnership buyout. And that lender used an SBA program. As lenders, more often than not, they do that. That's, that's typically what lenders do, which is yet another reason why we keep telling you folks, you need to stay on top of your COVID EIDL because you all seem to have this crazy idea that when you need financing in the future and you go to a bank, whether it's for a line of credit or or an express loan or a serious major funding for your business, you seem to think that your COVID EIDL is, has no, you know, it's just, right? Well, you're wrong because as we have said for the better part of six years now, going back to when we were financing brokers in 2018, we keep telling all of you that when you go to a bank to get a business loan, more often than not, they're going to put it into an SBA product. You know why they do that? Because the government is backing the loan against default and the bank doesn't want to put their own money at risk. Yes, the bank is lending you their money, but they are minimizing their risk to literally less than 15% of the dollar value of the loan and asking the Small Business Administration, the United States government, the taxpayer to certify, to indemnify, to ensure that loan against risk. And so you absolutely will be interacting with the SBA sometime in the future if you ever ask for financing. And a lot of businesses do. So please don't tell us you don't need us because you're going to need our information for that event. So in the case of this partnership buyout, that's exactly what happened. Their lender said, oh, $1,250,000, we're going to put it into an SBA 7A product. There was no real estate involved, so it was a 7A. And so they went into a SBA loan 
and they were approved for the SBA loan. And then the lender, knowing the guidelines with the government, with the SBA, said, well, we've got to submit what's called a request for subordination, which the SBA then gives that lender permission to make the loan against the business entity with the full knowledge and understanding that the SBA's position for the COVID loan is primary. That is the first position, and the new lender coming in will be in second position, meaning that in the event of a default, in the event of the business closing and disposing of assets to repay the debts, the SBA's first position, the COVID loan, gets paid first. Think of it like a mortgage on your house. You buy a house, you get a mortgage. And then 12 years later, you go to the bank and you get a home equity line of credit so that you can put a new roof on the house, buy a generator, fund a vacation, pay off your credit cards, whatever. And that new bank, you know, that new line of credit, if it's the same bank or different bank in the future, is going to have to create a secondary position behind your mortgage. And that's called subordination. Well, with the COVID loan, program, it's the same concept. The SBA has a UCC lien against all of the assets for your business, tangible and intangible. And therefore, when the business closes, fails, whatever, if the business is going to dissolve or dispose of assets, then the cash from the sale or disposal of those assets will go towards paying the COVID loan first, the SBA lender is second. In the case of our buyout client, their SBA lender filed the paperwork and the kid, and I'm going to tell you, I'm not just saying this because I'm an old guy. I came at this when the client hired us with the appropriate professional respect for a colleague. But as we progressed through the process, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. The young man at the lender who prepared the paperwork for the SBA screwed the whole thing up because he did not understand the very unique requirements of the COVID EIDL program. And because he didn't understand it, and because he didn't review the client's business operating documents, the operating agreement, articles of formation, the COVID application, the COVID loan agreement, when this young person at the lender filled out the paperwork for the subordination, he completely filled it out incorrectly. And that got to the SBA, to the subordination team, and triggered a cascade of of events which the client hired us to repair and to overcome any other obstacles in the path to a successful buyout. And we did that. I fixed everything. This went from a subordination, a simple subordination request to a change of ownership to an incorrectly submitted EIDL application with incorrect ownership information on the original application in 2020 to the subordination. In addition, SBA was asking the client to repay the million dollar COVID loan. Oh yeah. As I've stated in some previous videos, when you are performing a basic business operation and you need SBA cooperation, authorization, permission, the forms you file and or the email you receive from the SBA loan specialist often says, please note, monetary consideration may be required to receive approval for this transaction. And again, in this case, not only did the change of ownership team, while well, they were working on that aspect first, after I took over, they wanted $250,000 of the million dollar COVID loan paid back. And I convinced them to waive that requirement. Then when the file was approved for change of ownership and we cleared up the issues with the incorrectly submitted original COVID application because I had to fix that also. And the file went back over to subordination team. I thought the lender, the young person, the kid, the young man who had prepared the original incorrect subordination request, I thought he was going to take it over and I, my work was done. Like I literally sent an email going, okay, my work here is done. Except it wasn't because this is why I keep saying young man, young kid, because he handled it like an immature 12 year old all the way through the process. Like he, he kept checking in unnecessarily. He kept communicating with the SBA, even though I said to him, please don't check with the SBA because it confuses the process and just ultimately made a complicated situation literally more complicated with his bad communications. Ultimately, I had to step back in and take over the subordination request, which the lender was supposed to do. And we didn't charge the client any additional fees for this, although we were in our rights to do so because that's not what he hired us to do. And I repaired the subordination paperwork and we got everything hunky-dory right to the finish line, including that the subordination team now, different team at the SBA, was demanding that the client repay the entire $1 million COVID loan from the new loan. Their position was as well. This is short-term working capital. And if you've got other money on the table, then we here at the SBA want that money to pay back the COVID loan. And as I had done with the change of ownership team, I convinced the subordination team to waive the requirement for repayment of the $1 million COVID loan. 
and we got the client to the finish line, sailed through at the very end. I say sailed through on calm seas at the very end, but it was a rough passage on rough ocean waters up to that point. And mostly because the client had submitted an incorrect COVID application and they didn't know they did. I'm the one who figured that out. And the kid at the lender who handled the entire transaction completely screwed up the paperwork. And this is why we sit here at Aurora Consulting, at the EIDL experts, and we know that you need us. We have multiple other scenarios I could recite on this video where people come to us when it's too late. We're working right now on a natural disaster loan. Now, typically we only work with small businesses, but in this case, it's a homeowner and we're helping them with the natural disaster loan. And again, the SBA has completely abused this homeowner and the loan was declined and we're helping them get a reconsideration. But that client also got not one, but two different COVID economic injury disaster loans, EIDLs. And now the SBA has come back and said, well, hold on a second. We're not going to approve you for the natural disaster loan. We're not going to approve you for the hardship accommodation request on your COVID EIDL that he requested before he hired us and that we then called the SBA and said, why was it declined? The SBA said, we're not going to approve you for these two items because we are currently auditing your COVID loans, the two loans. The SBA is doing what's called post-closing compliance. I mentioned this in a video the other day and we got some knucklehead came into our comments and said, that's fake, that's wrong information. Really? Because, I, I mean, we've got the emails, not just for this client, but for another person who received the same email, that this is a thing. The SBA is auditing the files. They want to see the tax returns from 2019 that they didn't get to see on the COVID loans. They want to get a tax transcript from the IRS. You know, they're, they're doing an audit on the file. And so this is more information that I have to untangle to assist this client. Again, yet another reason why you need us and, and you say you don't need our help. But this is a loan that you took during the pandemic that's a 30-year loan. And for most people, you're four and a half years in. So you have 25 and a half years remaining on the loan, right? And if you're in a natural disaster, God forbid, if you're in a disaster area and you need to get funding for your business through the SBA's disaster loan program, we see time and again how the SBA declines these loans for reasons that in, in most cases, they don't even disclose the reason. It just says discrepancy and they, they don't give you a specific reason, which blows my mind because as a former mortgage banker, as a loan officer in the mortgage business, we know our business is ruled by Equal Credit Opportunity Act, ECOA, RESPA. Real Estate Settlement Procedures Act, Truth in Lending Act, TILA. We're ruled by these and many, many, many other federal and state regulations with regards to the consumers who are asking our mortgage companies to borrow money. And one of those regulations are when you decline a loan, you've got to give a specific reason. It's credit. It's insufficient assets. It's an inadequate employment history or other, you know, appraisal value does not comply with the purchase price or sufficient amount for a refinance. These were eight and a half by 14 sheets of paper, you know, legal sized pieces of paper with line by line by line in two columns of all the different reasons why we would be declining a mortgage loan. But when the SBA declines a natural disaster loan right now or a hardship accommodation program request, the letter basically says you declined. Uh, there's, there's discrepancies between this and other information we have on file. That's it. They don't give specific reasons. We had one recently where it was a natural disaster for an agriculture, a USDA, US Department of Agriculture disaster. And that letter said that basically the SBA didn't believe that our client's business, which was the construction business, was impacted by a drought, which is mind blowing. That's like trying to say that a, a bar in a natural disaster area where the, the stream flooded literally 200 yards away, but the bar wasn't damaged. It's kind of like saying, well, if the bar was able to open, and by the way, this is based on a real case, like literally it's here in Connecticut, she owns a bar and literally 200 yards from her business, this little tiny stream became a deluge through a huge thunderstorm that came through in September. It's as if the SBA said, oh no, you, you weren't impacted by the storm damage. It's this vague, nonsensical reason and that's one of the very few examples I've got where somebody actually got a reason why they're declined. But more often than not, what we've seen is discrepancies between your COVID file and your natural disaster file or discrepancies in your file. And there's nothing specific. Three reasons why small business owners contact us. Reason number one, these folks have their act together with their small business. They're on top of their paperwork, their organization of documents, their organization of operations. They know all the information they need to know about. They have their act together, but they have hit an obstacle with some confusing aspect of the EIDL or Natural Disaster Loan Program. 
Second reason small business owners contact us, they're not that well organized with their paperwork, their operations, their information, any number of things, and they've run into an obstacle with the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program for COVID-19 or the Natural Disaster Loan Program. And because of their confusing, poor organization of their documents or information, that has created the challenge while interacting with the SBA. And number three, why small business owners, at least in 2024, have reached out to us, they're having problems making payments on the COVID-19 disaster loans they got during the pandemic access to. Could you take a minute to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell and like the video? Because we discovered that 74% of small business owners who watch our videos are not subscribers. Now, maybe you get the information you need in one video, but when you subscribe, what you're helping us to do is expand our reach to the nearly 4 million small business owners who got pandemic financing or to the other small business owners out there in the world who have been impacted by natural disasters. So could you just take a moment to subscribe and hit the notifications bell and of course like the video because all of that helps juice the algorithm, helps tell YouTube that we're important to you with the messaging and information we give to small business owners all around the country. And here's the thing about our videos and the work we've done small business owners have told us how surprised they are by the quality of the material and the information and the advice that we provide. Here's a message that we just got two weeks ago from a woman who reached out to us with a severe situation where the business was failing and she asked for some assistance. She was surprised that we responded as quickly as we did. And then she wrote a really awesome review about our services. One other thing, we have another video channel, Simple Sense for Small Business, which you should click over there and subscribe to that channel too because that channel is all about the really simple and boring and mundane things that no one else ever talks about with running a small business. I know right now I've been rambling on and a lot of the stuff is in my head as a loan officer, as a processor, as an underwriter, as an advocate for our small business client against the court of SBA administration and, and bureaucracy. And and I may not be as specific as you need me to be, but I promise you in the Resource Hub, I have taken the time to consolidate every aspect of what you're going to need, whether you're doing a basic business operation, like you're changing your address, more complicated than you think it is with the SBA. Yeah, because we have clients who've done that and we've seen how that didn't work out properly either, to accounting for the payments that you've made on your COVID loan since the first payments, because we're seeing that also. So watch for an upcoming video or maybe videos about how principal and interest is not being properly applied on repayment. Oh, oh yeah, that's a thing. Or uh, the client we're working with right now who contracted with us uh, as a consultant to manage a change of ownership. He's got a business partner, very small percentage of ownership, less than 20%, but he's removing him. And so therefore, he has to interact with the SBA for the COVID loan that we helped him to get during the pandemic. He had been declined due to quote unquote credit. But when I ran his credit, I didn't see there was anything bad about his credit at the time. And we were submitted at the uh, reconsideration request during the pandemic and we got him a Approved for a lot of money, a factory down in North Carolina, where thankfully in the recent hurricanes, he was his area was not badly impacted. His, his factory is up and running with minimal cleanup. But I digress. So as part of the change of ownership, he needed to apply for the hardship accommodation program to reduce his payments. It was a cash flow issue, and the timing was good to apply for it because it was this was before hurricane season and before these storms wreaked havoc on his business temporarily, thankfully. But we helped him out and we prepared the paperwork. He submitted and he was approved for hardship accommodation on April 14th, 2024. And last week on a call with him, as we logged into the My SBA portal together and we looked at his file, lo and behold, what did I discover? The SBA screwed up his hardship and they don't even have him in the hardship program on the My SBA portal. In fact, they have the status as delinquent. It doesn't say hardship accommodation. And I, I was like, wait a minute. So I went to the file and sure enough, there's the letter that he received and I have a copy of from from April 14th. You are approved for hardship accommodation. Crazy. These are the kinds of issues where you say you don't need us, but you do. Unless you are going to pay off the entire loan, actually, that's wrong. Even if you have the money right now to pay the loan off in full, if you want to do it right, guess what? 
You need us because it is not just looking at the MySBA portal where it says payoff amount. If you send that amount in, chances are pretty good you will have not paid off the full amount to account for the principal and interest plus what's called per diem interest until the day of receipt of the payment at U.S. Treasury at the SBA. So even if you have the money that you want to use that money and pay the loan off in full and get this off your back so you never have to deal with the SBA again and you don't need us and you don't need our information, you don't need our EIDL resource hub. No, go ahead, pay off the loan. You got the money, pay it off. It's even something that simple, writing a check and sending it to the SBA. And by the way, if you call the SBA, chances are better than nine out of 10 that you will be given wrong information on the phone by an SBA representative. As well-meaning as these folks are, as dedicated, as professional, as courteous as they are. I know they are. I speak to SBA agents all the time. I've spoken to thousands of SBA representatives. But you are better than 90% sure to get wrong information. We have seen this time and time and time again in the Resource Hub. There's a whole section, including a private playlist of instruction videos, just on communicating with the SBA, how to call the SBA, how to send an email to the SBA. You think that you're going to get a result by the firing off? Let me, I've, I've seen the emails that you all send to the SBA. I'm telling you as a retired loan officer and as the EIDL expert, having processed thousands of transactions with the SBA, y'all fail time and time again. I was on the phone the other day with this natural disaster client I mentioned, and we called the SBA together because I wanted to know why the SBA had declined his hardship accommodation request. I looked at the application he submitted. It was perfect. I looked at the profit and loss statement he submitted. It was perfect. It was exactly what SBA asked for on a hardship accommodation. Properly filled out application and a profit and loss, a current year-to-date profit and loss statement. Okay? So I was confused why he was declining, especially because this year, 2024, I have processed over 100 hardship accommodation applications with a 100% approval rate. So I was very confused. So he and I called the SBA together. And that's when I discovered that his file was in post-closing compliance and everything was on hold, okay? So by the way, this is yet another section of our resource hub that I have to update to teach you how to manage this aspect because this is complicated and you have to understand it's an audit. So if you if you do it wrong, you're in a whole heap of trouble, like serious trouble. Go back and read your loan agreement. It tells you on the loan agreement the kind of trouble you can be in if you give the federal government wrong information. And the purpose of the audit is to compare what you send to the SBA today with what you gave to the SBA on your application 2020, 2021, when you applied for the loan in the first place. that's They're cross-referencing that. They're looking at the tax transcripts. So, for, so in any case, I'm on the phone, and we found out that the reason why he was declined for hardship is because of this post-closing compliance. And we got off the call. And this small business owner, who is an otherwise smart, organized, well-prepared individual, very professional, said to me, wow, how did you do that? I, I could never talk on the phone like that to the SBA. And I thanked him. I was humbled by the very kind compliment. But, 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 even for something as simple as a phone call, you need us. And I've put a whole section into the SBA COVID guidebook, which I wrote three and a half years ago, about how to speak to the SBA, how to call the SBA. Prepare for the call, plan for the call, make the call. Be polite on the call, but be firm. All of that, I've baked that all that in. And I know you all think, oh, just this guy, this guy Trevor doesn't know what he's talking about. Go ahead, try it. Try it on your own. Try the transaction like our client with the buyer out did with an SBA approved lender who screwed up the subordination paperwork, screwed up change of ownership, requirements from the SBA to pay back a million dollars. All of that and more. Every aspect of what you need to know about managing the COVID EIDL or applying for a natural disaster loan, it's all in our EIDL resource hub. I'm not trying to sell it to you, but I am trying to sell it to you because you need it. You say you don't need it, then stop calling us and asking us for help because every day people are asking us for help. We get these notifications, these emails, these text messages, these phone calls on Saturdays and Sundays. We get live chats on our websites at 1130 at night, our time. We're on the East Coast. People asking for help. So please don't insult our intelligence and tell us you don't need us. You're going to need it at some point because you took out a loan from the federal government that kept your business open during the pandemic, that helped you to get through the pandemic, and you signed a loan agreement which comes with responsibilities and restrictions and requirements. So you absolutely do need us. This following part is not meant to denigrate or or talk badly about anybody else who's out there 
promoting themselves as doing what we do here at EIDL Experts. It's not. And I know who the good YouTubers are, and there's other YouTube channels that I follow, and I get information from them as you do. But they don't do what we do. They don't. We are in it, sleeves rolled up, doing operations with small business owners day in and day out. It's a different type of experience. And I've had people tell us time and again, you know, I spoke to the other person, or I called this person, or I called a lawyer, or I called my CPA, I, and you and Linda Ray are the experts. But we're not offering consulting services anymore. No more phone calls. No more consulting. We're not doing it for a variety of reasons. There's other things we're doing. And that's why we created the EIDL Resource Hub. Because this loan is going to go on for many years for you. I'm not saying that means you will definitely have this loan for that full term because maybe you'll find a way to pay it off sooner. Maybe you'll sell your business. Maybe you'll close your business. Maybe you'll file bankruptcy. I don't know. I can't predict the future any better than you can. But I can tell you what's going on right now. What's going on right now is that you folks are always telling us you don't need us. And when I say you're telling us you don't need us, because those inquiries you see here on the YouTube comments and the emails that we get and the phone calls, the text message, it's people who are expecting us to just give this stuff, our expert knowledge, our guidance, our time for free. If I get 100 inquiries through our website of people asking for help, I get two people offering to pay for it up front. Two people out of 100. Now, that's an anecdotal statistic. If you want, Linda Ray and I will do the hard numbers. And I bet dollars to donuts, the numbers are actually worse than that. It's probably two out of 500. Because again, people are asking us for help every day of the week. And no one ever says, please tell me what the price is for your consulting service so that you can help me. We are not a charity. We do not work for the Small Business Administration. We do not work for the federal government. We are not a nonprofit organization out there giving this stuff away for free. We are a small business just like you. This is one of many reasons why we don't offer the consulting anymore. But we have the EIDL Resource Hub. Right now, the cost, and we get people telling us all the time, oh my God, why is it so much money. Because if you have not kept up with me on this video so far to see just how complicated and just how much you need us, then please don't waste our time and look at the website. And don't click on the link because when you see the price, if you don't understand what I've been talking about up to this point, you will never get it. Please go watch another YouTube channel and you know learn how to make the perfect French gravy for your steak. But don't click on the link because you don't need us. But you do need us. And that's what the Resource Hub does. If you buy it now, it's a flat fee. It includes the guidebook, which people have used our guidebook to manage their operations with the SBA, including getting approved for hardship accommodation. Need I show you the feather boa, again, sent us to a company in San Francisco that provides feather boas and angel wings and so forth. Linda Ray just shouted they're in LA. I don't know why I thought they were in San Francisco. To Lady Gaga and Elton John and big mega stars like that. And they bought our guidebook before the resource hub existed. And they used our guidebook to get approved for the hardship accommodation program. And they sent us a message saying, you saved our business with the instructions. Trevor's instructions were easy to use. I followed exactly the instructions in the guidebook that Trevor wrote and I got us approved. He needed us, and we were there. Because when you say you don't need us, you do. You just don't know it yet. This is your last chance to get access to the resource hub at the current price. Now, I will tell you right now, the current price includes free updates through December 31st, 2024. So that whole thing I mentioned about the new chapter, the new section on post-closing compliance, yeah. So if you buy it today, there is a section on preparing for an audit, which is a comprehensive chapter in the guidebook, preparing for an audit with the SBA. But I'm going to enhance that chapter with the post-closing appliance that I'm seeing now. It's a new development. That's why we have sold these guidebooks and provided free updates because I knew that this program was going to keep evolving and that people who put their faith in us, people who knew that they needed us and put up their money and they bought our guidebook, I wanted to honor that investment in our integrity, in our experience and knowledge and expertise by providing those folks with free updates. I don't know who does that. Tell me who does that because have you ever bought... J.K. Lasser's tax guide. Do I have one here on the bookshelf? I do not. J.K. Lasser's tax guide. It's actually, it's written by a really good friend of Linda Ray's named Barbara Weltman. And it's it's published every year to help you understand your income taxes, whether it's for a small business or your personal tax. Personally, I've been reading that guide. Well, I mean, I don't read it anymore because we have a CPA, but back in my 20s, I was reading that guidebook. That's a long time ago because I'm old. That book does not provide free updates every year. You got to buy a new book. 
every year to do your taxes because the IRS changes rules. The IRS, like the SBA, changes procedures, introduces new procedures, revises existing procedures to honor those folks who said, Linda, Ray, and Trevor, I need you who put up their money and bought our guidebook, we came back as a thank you, as a free bonus of appreciation to provide the free updates. If you buy that resource hub today, you will have those free updates through December 31st, 2024. And I'm going to tell you right now, there are major updates coming. And when I hand those updates to Linda Ray, who's in the next room, we're in our office, she's in the front room, I'm in the back room, I'm in the library. When I hand those updates to Linda Ray and she begins publishing those. We will be increasing the price of the resource hub substantially because it's not a guidebook anymore. It's like an online class. You will have access to a private playlist of instructional videos. You will have all of the special templates that I created, including scripts that you can use when you call the SBA. You will have the SBA forms that SBA requires, change of ownership, subordination, hardship accommodation, and so on and so forth. If you're applying for natural disaster loan, SBA 20 202, the IRS 8821, all these forms. You'll have access to those forms and chapters dedicated to helping you fill out each form accurately for one fee. And if you buy it now, it comes with free updates through December 31st, 2024. And you will be getting it now at the current price because very soon, I'm recording this near the end of October of 2024. We have two months left in the year. Those updates are coming. I promise you, Linda Ray's been yelling at me because she's like, you don't understand how much work goes into publishing these things when you give them to me. But when they are published, it is access that you will have for years and years and years so that you can maximize your chances of being approved for a disaster loan. We can't guarantee you'll be approved, but we have seen it both on our own actions and people have used our advice, how they have been able to improve their chances of success with the disaster loan program. Or if you are managing a transaction with the SBA, whether it's a, an audit situation, or if you need to close your business and file a bankruptcy, changing your business address, selling collateral, selling assets, setting up your prepayment procedure, paying off the loan, whatever that is, this resource is there for you when you need it and you will need it for a long time to come. <laughs>